What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Fresh Finance Podcast. My name is Thomas Elms. I've got my co-host here, Kyle Ryan, as always. And today we're going to make a little bit of a shift in the conversation that we normally have. Uh, you know, normally we're, we're taking a, a specific topic. We're diving pretty deep on that topic, doing analysis, providing guidance, insight, things of that nature. Um, today, we're actually going to be talking a little bit more in general about some good habits that, that you can set for yourself financially. Um, and just some also just four key components to becoming more disciplined and solidified in your money management. And, you know, Kyle, I'd love to just kind of throw this your way here off the bat, um, you know, as we kind of jump in, you know, what, what's the, the first thing on the list here that we want to kind of talk through about setting kind of good money habits, things of that nature? Yeah. And, you know, nothing about this is particularly easy, but they are incredibly important. You know, they're very basic concepts. The first thing is just good disciplined money management, you know, knowing yeah. what your money's doing for you. You know, I think the, I think the word budgets a rather ugly word. A lot of people don't want to do a budget because, you know, you don't want to sit there every day, once a week, breaking down your expenses line by line. What I do, what I've recommended my clients do is just do something simple, similar to expense tracking. You know, as long as you know where your money is going, how much you're spending, that's a great place to start because then you're not blind to it. You know, knowledge is powerful and having the knowledge of how much you're spending is really important. The first time I did it, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm really going to Chick-fil-A that much, spending hundreds of dollars at Chick-fil-A. You know, yeah. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have believed it if I didn't see it, right? So the first thing, and we're going to go back and break everything down, but the first thing, the most important thing in our opinion is expense tracking, just having a disciplined money management system. Everyone's got a different one. You know, some people, some people keep a very disciplined budget. They track it down by the dollars and the cents, line item by line item. Other people categorize their expenses. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. There's a lot of great budgeting tools, expense tracking tools out there, apps. Um, and it's really important to use them. Um, so expense tracking is really important. Another one that's really important is just setting financial goals, right? If you're working, if you're like Thomas and I, you're going to work every day. You're not going to work, you know, because you might really enjoy what you do. That's wonderful, but you're not going to work just to work, right? So yeah. everyone has a goal and it's really important to understand what your goals are, breaking down between short, medium, long-term goals. Of course, you don't know, you know, when retirement's going to be, especially if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s. It could be, you know, if it's 15 plus years away, you're not gonna be able to pinpoint the date. But if you have it in mind, you know, that you want to retire by a certain day, but at, at least you have something to work toward, Right. Um, yeah. thirdly would be building good financial habits. You know, that that's along the way, you know, that the earlier you do that, the better, because as we all know, habits are something that are easy to form and hard to break and forming really good financial habits early on will have a massive compounding effect on you later, uh, impact on you later. And the last thing would be, you know, maximizing what Thomas and I like to refer to as your return on time. You know, that could be things like in your personal life, in your work life, delegating, not just delegating the tasks that you get at work, but you know, a lot of people, I mean, Thomas, we work with business owners. I know a lot of business owners who spend 20, 30 hours a year on doing their taxes. And then sometimes they'll still get it wrong. And then they have yeah. to come out and pay fees that they could have saved by hiring an accountant in the first place. People who spend a lot of time creating their own wills to save a quick buck on an attorney. An estate planning attorney, you know, they're worth their weight in gold. So there's a lot of different things, but just to recap them all, you know, discipline, money management, setting goals, setting good, strong habits, and making sure that you're doing things that are worth your time are four of the greatest things that you could do early on for the greatest skills you can master early on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and for me to just kind of hit on each of those, when, when it comes to the first the first line item is I, I really just call that good cash flow management, you yeah. know, getting that budgeting word out of the conversation, because when you're actually managing your cash flow, you're managing what's coming in too. Right. And, and you're tracking what's coming in because, especially from a business perspective, planning out cash flow is very important. Um, so you're planning for what's coming in. Also, in the future, looking at retirement, right? As a, as a normal person, planning out what that cash flow looks like in the future as, as well is really important. Um, it also, again, gets away from, from that, you know, capital B word of budgeting. But at the same time, I also like to sometimes. Uh, you know, try to get people to think about budgeting in the reverse, because most people traditionally will think about how much money am I taking in? Okay, how much money can I spend? And then how much is left over that I can save, right? Yep. We want to reverse that conversation. And it actually reverts to the goal setting piece. Because without the goal setting piece, you can't necessarily figure out how much you want to be saving 
um, whether it be saving cash or saving for, you know, long-term investments. And so you're kind of setting those goals and then building out a cash flow st management strategy that allows you um, to, to manage these monies correctly, where you say, hey, based off of my plan, I need to save 12% of my income for retirement. And I need to save 4% of my income towards an expense that I'm looking at having in savings uh, in the next 12 to 24 months, right? So you're going to save that 12%, save that 4%, what's that, whatever's left over is going to be what is used for any sort of fixed expenses like mortgages, cars, insurance, things of that nature. Anything left over after that is going to be on a discretionary basis, things like lifestyle expenses. Um, you know, and I think that's the perfect way to allow yourself to set the good habit of, of living, you know, at or below your means, especially trying to live below your means. Uh, because I think what we're seeing right now, especially in some circumstances, is people in their 20s are getting great jobs that are paying well, and they're moving up quickly, their income is rising steadily, and their lifestyle is following it, yep. right? And it's following it probably unnecessarily. I think that's probably the best word for it. And so making sure that as that income is increasing, if your lifestyle is increasing, you need to make sure that the savings is increasing as well. Uh, because one of the biggest things with young people, talk about travel, things of that nature, social media is you know, the devil when it comes to creating expectations of who you should be or what you should be doing, how much you should be traveling. Once you set a, a new bar on what you're doing, it becomes the, the new floor and it increases your expectations to a point where your lifestyle has to be so immaculate if you start all of these things early that it's incredibly expensive to fund. Um, you know, and so just kind of living below your means at the start um, can actually, from a mental perspective, help you as well. Um, you know, so I, I think that's really important. And the last thing, delegation. Um Return on time is so important. Ask anybody in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Return on time is incredibly important. And I think that from a delegation perspective, starting this early is so important because if you don't delegate early and you start handling, handling these things on your own, when you do need it, you truly need to delegate, it's much harder to, to let go of the reins a little bit. Uh, but it's also just a great mental habit for yourself because, you know, if you're delegating, you know, investment and money management to an advisor, that gives you more time, right? It also gives you more clarity because you have the leverage to utilize that person for expertise and guidance, tax preparation, like you're talking about, hiring a CPA so you don't have to spend the time, you know, to worry about all those things. Uh, you know, thirdly, estate planning, just like we were hitting on, uh, you know, having a professional do that for you. And then you just being able to go to them as you need to make updates, right? Not having to put together all those documents yourself and possibly making an error, which from an estate planning perspective could be a tremendous issue, right? And then even on the insurance side, um, you know, having somebody that can put those things together for you um, in an easy fast that, that saves you time so that you can spend more on it with your family, with the things that you're passionate about. Um, it's incredibly important. I think you hit a lot of a, a lot of good topics there. Um, you know, my most successful clients, I'm sure you could say the same. It's, you know, they don't drive the most luxurious car. They certainly didn't when they were growing their wealth. You know, you'll you'll look at your peers who are going on vacations, who are going and doing this and buying the expensive house, buying wealth is not what you see, right? Wealth is wealth is typically behind the scenes, especially early on. You know, you're not going to see the wealth of someone investing 50% of their income, but they feel it. That's the big difference, seeing it versus feeling it. So the most successful clients in my in my experience has been the ones who prepared early and prepared often and are saving a large percentage of their income. You know, going back to the expense tracking, you know, the, the money management, there are so many different ways to do it. There's no black and white answer. There's no right or wrong answer as long as you're doing something that works for you. And that's the important thing about all these four different points, you know, the money management, the goal setting, the habit building, the return on time. You don't have one without the other. Right. Mm -hmm. If if you you can set all the goals you want in the world, but if you don't have the habits and the money management skills to get you to that end goal, then your goal is just nothing more than a wish, a dream. Right. It's yeah. not a goal. It's just a dream. Goals are actionable. Goals are something that you work toward each and every day, not at finite points. So that's why the sooner you understand and work on these skills, this the more return it's going to have on you in your life. Absolutely. You know, and I think kind of the headline here, when you really think about it is 
a financial planner can help you essentially create and build all, all four of these things that are incredibly necessary to have just good financial health, but also to create wealth right is is we're going to we're going to have the ability to help you from a cash management standpoint we're going to be able to help direct you based off of what your vision and your your values are what right you know what good goal setting looks like what numbers you should be looking to achieve um you know and then delegation that's just kind of name of the game for us yeah. um you know there's so many things that an advisor could a good advisor could provide value there um you know that that really just kind of is the umbrella cover over all of this and you know back to the the wealth conversation, living below your means, you know, rich is measured in dollars. Wealth is measured in time. Um, I really like having that conversation because rich is just a dollar amount. Wealth is if I stopped making money today, how long could I live off of what I have? And I, I think that the sad reality is that if you ask the wealth question, that wealth question to a lot of people, the amount of time that they could live is, is, is pretty slim. Um, it, it would probably shock them. And, you know, so really kind of having that focus as well as important, you know, and, and the last thing is kind of hovering around the conversation of, of the wealthy people that you've interacted with, that I've interacted with. They're not very flashy. Most of them aren't very flashy. And I think that a great quote to kind of solidify that is wealth is not impressed with material possessions. Right. And be, because wealthy people could go get it if they wanted to. That's, yep. Right. And if anything, it's it's almost like in the it operates in the opposite. Right. If wealth sees you buying these material, these, you know, stupid material things and I'm not trying to, you know, hop on my, you know, my bandwagon or anything, but it's essentially, essentially it creates a negative effect because they're like, wow, you have this money and you're not utilizing it correctly. Yep. Right. So it's almost like in, in the opposite. And so just really trying to focus on what you can control um, and trying to build wealth in a way that will allow you to sustain a long time or provide for the people that you care about is, is incredibly important. Yeah. Uh, you know, the last thing I'd ended on with is just understand your opportunity costs when you go and purchase anything. You know, if, if you think you can afford a $300,000 house and you stretch yourself on 450, understand what you have to give up. There's nothing wrong with, you know, enjoying the materialistic things in life. It's Absolutely. just understand what you have to give up, right? You want to get that new car. You want to get that really nice car. You, you have to give something up just, and don't just, you know, spring on a decision because you want something, understand how it impacts everything else. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I think that's one of the most interesting tight ropes that an advisor walks is trying to create a plan that allows for individuals, couples, families, how, you know, however you want to label it to save enough to provide for their future, but also live enough to create happiness from the point of today to the point of retirement um, and through retirement as well. You know, it's, it's a tight rope, but it's an important one to try and walk, you know, Absolutely. because you do want to create both opportunities because, you know, the last thing that you want to do is be miserable for 10, 15, 20 years. And then you saved up all this money and you can retire and you've built a habit of such a low lifestyle that you you mentally just can't spend this money. I have so many clients so that are many. like that. It's, <laughs> yeah. it, it's mind boggling. But when you create a habit, and again, this is back to the habits, but when you create a habit for 30 plus years where you live incredibly low lifestyle, and then you now have the money to live the lifestyle you've always wanted, but there's this mental block that you can't pull the trigger on that withdrawal every month or whatever it may be. Uh, learning how to to kind of wait in the middle is very important. Oh yeah, I've I've told plenty of clients before, like you know you can spend a little bit more money if you want. <laughs> yeah, go on vacation, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. Just the psychology of it all is is very important. And you know I think that's where you know think about if 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 that client of yours didn't have you right. It probably wouldn't take that money, that extra money out and go on that vacation or do that thing, you know, or, you know, send that gift to that charity or send that gift to, you know, their, their grandchildren or something of that nature. And, you know, that's why I think our industry as a whole is really shifting towards that values based, you know, or goals based, you know, approach as, as we're trying to find a way to create wealth, but also enjoy your life on that journey as well. I, I think that's super important. Absolutely. I, I think you, you've summed it up really well there. You know, it's, I always tell clients, you know, we all have $10 worth of wishes and $6 in our pockets. You got to yeah. prioritize it somehow. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. 
Well, perfect, Kyle. Great episode and uh, looking forward to the next one. Thanks so much uh, for everybody watching, listening, doing a little bit of both and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you.